Human was sitting down in the corner of the cargo bay when Lizra walked in. Argal was still trying to talk to him, but it seemed to be a rather one-sided conversation. She padded over to Human and sat down on the ground across from him. And when you busted open that window, fucking hell, they must have been so scared. I would have thrown that Captain Rax's straight out of his own command center right into the void. I wonder what the fine for that would be. I didn't feel like hurting people who were just doing their jobs. Human said, glancing away from Argall and down at the little captain seated in front of him. His masked face gave no indication of his true emotions, and looking at it made Lizra uncomfortable, as if it were intentionally designed to instill fear in anyone unfortunate enough to find themselves trapped in its gaze. Argall, would you please go to Bay 3 and move the deuterium and tritium storages out of their places, please? Lizra requested. Yeah, no problem, Captain. We need to refuel the generators already? Argall asked. No, Tic Tac has requested assistance with something. He said it should be quite simple. It'd be great if you could help him out. She instructed, causing the Indoran to leave them to get to work on his new task. All right, I'll get to it, human. When I get back, we need to have a sparring match. Maybe I could teach you a thing or two. Argall bragged, grunting and flexing his purple arms as he left the room. Lizra turned back towards human having to look up to make eye contact as he towered over her. Apologies for his brashness. He's good company, I swear. He just gets carried away when he meets people similar to him. I can see, but I wouldn't say I share his enthusiasm. Of course, you don't have to do that kind of stuff anymore unless you want to. So you're free. What now? We can take you anywhere you'd like to go. Do you have any place in mind? Not particularly. Maybe somewhere quiet with lots of islands. Well, we plan on making our first stop in the quarry sector. They have excellent oceans there, and the cities are beautiful, one of my favorite architectural styles. Also, some of the best food. It's quite a lovely agricultural world. I don't need to eat. I'll be fine. Okay, not a culinary connoisseur. That's quite all right. After that, we must report back into the UF about the status of our quest. I'd love it if you would join us for that, at the very least to tell them personally as to why our mission isn't exactly everything they were expecting it to be. We'll see, Human said, taking a lengthy pause before his next response. So what does food taste like? I beg your pardon? Food, I've never had it. What's it taste like? Well, it, it can taste like anything, really. Kind of a difficult thing to explain. Everything has a different taste. I mean, even Zait's species has to consume food. How have you never eaten? It wasn't something I ever needed to do. I figured a species of your size and speed would have to eat a lot. How do you sustain yourself? You must require nutrients on some level, I presume. Supplement injections. It's automatic, saves space and time. I see. Well, when we get off at the next stop, I could give you some recommendations if you would like. I can't believe you've never tasted anything. I've tasted blood if that counts. I'd hardly say that counts as food. It wasn't another person's, was it? No, just my own when I got hurt once. Well then, as captain of this vessel and you, somewhat a member of my crew now, I order you to enjoy some food at the next stop. Understood. Lizra looked up at the human with a saddened expression. It was hard to imagine someone spending an entire life in servitude, never given the opportunity to experience anything else. Even when they were overworked by the core, they had still had time to rest and eat, to enjoy the little things in life. Human didn't have that solace, apparently. What a miserable existence it must be to never get to enjoy it. It filled her with a deep sorrow, and she wondered what really went on behind that opaque mask. She scooted closer, looking up at Human, trying to imagine what he really was. What do you look like under that helmet, Human? I don't know. What do you mean? You don't even know what you look like? I don't want to. You don't take off your helmet just to breathe real air? To enjoy the feeling of the sun on your fur? I've never needed to. I see. Well, we would never judge you for how you look human. I want you to know that. But I will not pressure you into doing something you're uncomfortable with either. We'll be to quarry in a few days. You can relax anywhere on the ship until then. Lizra thought about asking him why he apologized to her the first time they met. 
but concluded now wasn't the best time to throw another question at him. Lizra decided to leave Human Bee for the remainder of the day. Maybe he was slowly warming up to her, and soon she could get him out of his shell, both literally and metaphorically. Lizra tended to a few things around the ship for a while, checking in on their progress with Zate, and was satisfied with their projected arrival time. Once she had finished her rounds, Lizra went searching for Tic Tac and Argal to see what they were up to. Upon arrival, all the boxes had been moved to make room for something that Argal was trying in vain to put together. I told you, these hands are too big to make these fine adjustments you're asking for. Chastised the bald purple alien, throwing one of the tools to the side. I would do it myself if I could. You will have to make do with what you have. However, getting angry and throwing the driver is not going to get us anywhere. Just be glad I haven't thrown it at your stupid little box. It wouldn't even dent me that, I can assure you, quipped Tic Tac. Oh, is that a challenge? We'll just see about that, you little shit. Argal manners, Lizra reprimanded. Oh, he's gonna find my manners when he ends up in the trash compactor once I figure out what Neanderthal and Barbarian actually mean. Barbarian, a brainless warrior who solves problems with strength and anger that could otherwise be overcome by more delicate means. I have another more lengthy definition, if you would be interested. All right, that's it. I'm more interested in... Gentlemen, gentlemen, please calm yourselves. What are you trying to do here? Maybe I can be of assistance. No need to throw insults around when instead we could throw our heads together instead. Lizra chirped, walking between the two and looking at their project. I am trying to instruct the Indurin how to refill my depleted hydrogen isotope stores, but we seem to have met an impasse with the first step. Okay, and that step would be, asked the captain. All he merely needs to do is release the storage container from my rear port, create the necessary adapters between my intake valve and the exhaust port on your hydrogen storage unit, then proceed to facilitate the transfer of material. 909 is not responding to my requests, otherwise I would have him do the operation. That seems rather long-winded for a first step, Liz recountered. Let's just break it down into a few easier-to-understand procedures. The three worked for the better part of the evening, creating the necessary adapters from the various spare parts laying around the cargo bay. By the time they were finished, the place resembled something more akin to a workshop than a cargo hold. Once complete, Argyll picked up Tic Tac's black box and hefted him onto his shoulder. No, put me back down. I do not wish to be carried about like some mere cargo again. The box complained. Would you rather I just leave you here with the rest of your cargo pals? You would be among your people here after all. We have Tiktonic, the water supply, and oh, there's Shira, the waste purifier. I hear she's lovely company. Point taken. Just bring me back to the common room, if you will. Try not to jostle me. Don't worry, you're in good hands, computer. I'll contain myself from bumping my barbarian form into every piece of furniture on the way over. Lizra sighed as the two set out back to the common room. Before she could decide where to go next, she got a ping on her interface pad. She pulled the small tablet out of her jumpsuit and saw that Zate had requested her presence on the bridge. When she arrived, she could tell Zate had been working rather intensely with something. Instead of their usual three arms, this time they sported six. They operated the majority of the ship's controls on their own, as well as typing away on two separate interface terminals. You seem busy. Lizra commented. We are currently operating at 60% capacity. No need to be alarmed. While you were away, we had been doing a deep inquiry as to the true identity of our new guests. We think we may have found something troubling that warrants your attention, Captain. And what exactly might that be? I don't know how I feel about you snooping around under our friends' noses. It was a necessary precaution. You will thank us later. We would like to see your interface pad so we can upload the information directly. We have decided that this information could be compromised if we used any networked means to relay it. It may take some time to read through for you. We have been rather thorough with our investigation, but we implore you to do so rather soon. We have tagged it as urgent. You can just explain it to me here. Save me the trouble, Zate. Negative, Captain. We do not know if he is listening to this conversation. What you mean, Tic Tac? Zate, you're starting to worry me. How can you be so sure that they have ill intentions? 
They have only acted admirably towards us thus far, and even helped us escape from the lunar facility. We request you read the full mock-up of what we have compiled before, forwarding us any more questions, Captain. Take our word on this. Do you trust us? I mean, yes. I trust you, Zate, but... Then read the dossier, Captain. Please. Okay, I will. But I've been up for quite a while. I'll take it to my quarters and get back to you first thing in the morning. Lizra handed over her interface pad to Zate, and once they had completed the upload, they passed it back to the captain. She put it back into her jumpsuit, wondering what could have possibly gotten Zate so worked up to be operating at 60% capacity. That couldn't have been healthy for them. They may be mostly mechanical, but their biological parts needed to rest at some point. Zate seemed certain that whatever was on this pad would change her opinion on their new companions. She hated doubting their true intentions, but she could tell there was more to the story than what Tic Tac had elected to share with her. When she deemed it was time to settle down for the evening, Lizra went to the communal washroom to prepare herself for slumber. She hopped up onto the stool to look in the mirror and was taken aback. It had been completely shattered. A spiderweb of cracks streaked across the surface, and in the center where her face should have been was a large impact from someone's fist.